Hi friends! Welcome to another Creating with Gorilla Art. Today, we're not just creating art, we're creating cake. inspiration for this week's project I came across a very well-known um, painter Wayne Thibo he uh, he's still alive today 99 years young and he did some really cool things probably around in the 50s 60s uh, he was really well known for painting cakes and pies and lipstick and cosmetic he did a lot of fun, very vibrant, colorful paintings, and they were not traditional to what everybody else was doing at the time. He came along at just the perfect time to introduce this kind of crazy, funky style of art, and everybody thought it was crazy. What's this guy doing painting cakes when other people were doing landscapes and all sorts of stuff? He really broke the rules, and I love that about Wayne. Um, I'm going to be attaching a link to uh, this video. You can find it. Um, it's another YouTube video, but it really it's about a 10 minute video on him. And I think it'd be really fun for you to do some research and also see all the really cool uh, paintings that he did. He did some neat things. His pies were cute. Now what he did is he used oil paint. His oil paint, he also just slathered that oil paint thickly on to like if he did a cake that it almost looked like you could just reach out and eat it. It looked like frosting right on the cake, which is so much fun. But we don't have the luxury of using oil paints. We do have our oil pastels and we've done it in many other projects. It's the same sort of thing that we're going to be doing. Let's talk about the supplies we're gonna need. Okay, so like I said, we're using oil pastels. Now, I'm gonna show you how to draw your cake using a pencil, of course, and you may need an eraser. Then we're going to outline it with a Sharpie. Oops, another pencil didn't need that. With a Sharpie. But your oil pastels, I want you to have fun with this. I want you to use whatever colors you've got that you want to do your cake. My cake here uh, is orange, yellow, we've got the blue stand, a brown thing here, like a table, pink frosting, and my new cake might look a little different. I don't know. We'll have to see. So you just grab whatever colors you like. If you don't have oil pastels, you can use crayons or markers. And hey, if you have paint and you'd prefer to paint this, you go right ahead. But today, I'm gonna show you how to use the oil pastels. So I'm gonna put those aside, and we're gonna get started drawing. We're gonna start by drawing the top of our cake, and it's going to be a very skinny, kind of long oval. I kind of have it lightly drawn in there, but I'm gonna go over it a little darker just so that you can see it. But when you're doing it yourself, you wanna be in sketch mode, which means you are barely pressing that pencil down. You don't wanna have it too dark. Um, you don't even wanna have it this dark because I did it dark so the camera could pick it up and you could see it, but you want your super, super gentle and super light that way, if you make any mistakes, it's an easy fix. So once you get that oval in, I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna draw my sides in. How many of you guys have ever baked a real cake? Those are fun and they're yummy. Okay, so now the bottom that we're drawing, it's going to kind of follow this curve that we see there. And what that does is it gives the illusion that the cake is round, right? It looks like it's just gonna keep going around, kind of making a cylinder. I'm gonna draw a little harder so you can see it. 
Okay. So that's the that's the biggest part of our cake. See? This cake looks a little shorter than that cake. And everybody's will be a little different. You don't want to have it too long though because we need to have all the space below it so that we can put our cake stand. Now we're going to be making the same shape that you did here, but it's going to be bigger. This is going to be our cake stand. Yeah, you can see that. And then our cake stand has some scallops, which is so much fun. And I want our scallops to start equal, or at least have this little line right there. So I'm gonna do a little scallop here, and I'm gonna try and keep them similar in length until I get to this point here. It's gonna shorten and be smaller. Maybe a little, little bigger than that. because that one's gonna look different because it's curving around. Same thing here. And they're not exactly the same, so I'm gonna fix that. Another reason to just draw a little lighter, see? Easy, easy fix. And it doesn't have to be perfect, guys. It really doesn't, it's just for fun. So I've got the scallop line. Now, if you remember, we talked about these lines in another video, in my sunset video, talked about scallops, and this is scallops again. Okay, so the next step is we're gonna draw two little lines about right down there. This is gonna be our cake stand. And guess what? We're gonna do the same shape that we've been doing but a little smaller, okay? You don't want it to be too small because it would look weird. You have to have it big enough that it can support um, your cake. There we go. Next up, we're going to draw the table line okay so I'm gonna do it probably in the middle of that oh, I'll draw a little harder so you can see it remember you're drawing super gently still not happy with that there that made me happy we have our table line and we have our cake stand so I'm gonna let you get caught up with all of that and then we're gonna come in and draw our cake. Um, we have to draw a slice out of our cake, make it look like it's been sliced, see? So get caught up, pause me rather, and then get caught up, and then come back and we'll go to the next step. Well, welcome back. Okay, so what we're gonna do is kind of find a point right about here in the middle of your cake. Because most of the time when you slice a piece of, or slice cake, you're going to start in the center. And from that center point, I'm gonna draw a slanted line, just like that. And then I'm gonna draw another line, and this one is slanted too, but not as much. See that? It's almost straight, but it's off just a little bit. And from those lines, I'm gonna draw straight down. Okay. And what we're going to do now is erase that middle point, this middle line. It's another reason I wanted you to draw super gently, because we were going to be erasing. And now you've got a slice of cake missing. Now later on we're going to come in and we're going to put some frosting. You know, cakes, they have them layered. This is a big cake too. You know what? Let's make a couple of layers of cake. Because reality is, you have several layers of that cake. 
lines in there. So what I did is I just drew some slanted lines and they can be wavy. They definitely can be wavy. In fact, this one's too high. Um, because this is frosting that's going to be in there and frosting is going to be poofy and wavy, right? It's not like a straight line. If you want to add a cherry, I'm going to do it with a circle and then I like to put a little line like that and there's my stem. I'm going to give you a real good close up so you can see that. Okay. Notice the little frosting lines right here, how they have a slight angle. Now this is the fun part with your cake, okay? You might just do it exactly like mine. Um, I did the circles, and then I imagine this was kind of that poofy frosting they put along. But let's, let's think about it. I've seen cakes to where they have um, kind of a crisscross design on them. So I'm gonna do that. Why not It'd be fun, do something different. And then I like hearts, so I'm gonna do hearts in the middle. Maybe I'm making this for a very special person, right? And it's gotta have hearts. Now I still like frosting. You know what? I'm gonna do little beads too. Cause that'll be fun. I like adding a lot of detail. What is yours gonna look like? Think about, think about doing something really fun. Now I know a lot of people say, oh, I wanna do chocolate cake. And you can do it chocolate if you want. You can do whatever you want. It's my opinion though that I like Personally, I like those bright colors. I don't want to see brown chocolate. I like to see like mine is orange. So you just think about that, what you want to do. You know what, this is gonna have frosting down there. So I'm going to do, I made these little scallop lines. That's gonna be the frosting. And then I'm gonna do frosting around this. And basically the frosting is just scallop lines over and then also under it. I'm going to match them up. See that? There we go. And then what I got to do, the secret to making that is you now I got to erase that line that was inside my frosting. So I'm gonna come, I'm gonna give you a close up as soon as I'm done. Let's see. See my little hearts. There's my frosting, my scallop lines. So I told you I was going to do my cake a little different than the, the other cake I showed you. Okay, we got to shake it up, right? We got to do things different. Okay, <clears throat> now I think you should pause me, get caught up, design your cake the way you want it to look. Remember, draw super gently. That way, if you don't kind of like the way you did it, then you can erase it. Keep your design simple. You don't want to have 500 things that it's going to be hard to color and paint it. Just keep it very simple. And what I'm going to do um, is I'm going to sharpie in everything. And I want you to do the same. Get caught up with your pencil uh, drawings. And then once you're done, sharpie it in. Go over all your lines with the black tracing it. And then meet me back here. Well, welcome back. I got all my um, tracing done, almost forgot to do the, the sides of my cake and then down on the bottom, so don't forget to do that. Once you get the tracing done, uh, you could go ahead and erase any extra um, pencil marks that you might not have covered it completely. I 
got mine all done. And then we're gonna start with the coloring of our cakes. Now I've got, like I said, I've got before, I've got my oil pastels and I think I'm gonna do a pink cake. So I'm just gonna start coloring in, although that's not as pink. That's more skin color, here's my pink. I'm gonna color it in and you don't have to go like completely thick. You can just kind of still see the white through it and that's okay because we're gonna be adding oil to spread it. I don't know why, but I always forget in the beginning to tell you guys that you might need some oil. You can certainly color this in, especially if you're using markers or something and not use the oil and you don't need it. So if you don't have access to oil, this is baby oil. Actually, this is canola oil, but you can use baby oil. Um, it just is gonna spread our oil pastel really, really well. You'll see. So as I'm coloring, I'm gonna get close up. You can see I'm leaving a lot of white spots, but like I said, when I spread that oil around, it's gonna cover it. So I'm just being a little careful around the black dots. So I'm gonna get this colored in. Okay, I got the pink all colored in. Now I'm gonna go to the next color. And I think I'm gonna do blue. Aha, got my light blue here. And I'm gonna do my frosting up here. I have a light blue. Now for the inside of my cake, I'm gonna do super, super light yellow. I love yellow cake. I love any type of cake. Who doesn't like cake? I don't wanna do it too hard. And then I've got to do my cake stand and I think I'm going to do orange. Okay, got my cake stand. And then I've gotta do my table. And you know what? I'm gonna do a dark blue from my table. So I'm using the side of my oil pastel. And I'm gonna push rather hard on this because I really want it to have a darker color. And I'm gonna push real hard right underneath the cake stand because we want it to look like it has a little bit of a shadow. colored in and then I'm gonna take a little black and I'm gonna put it right where I think there'd be a shadow that's just a nice dimension I'm gonna go back over that black with some more blue because I don't want the black to overpower it 
like I said, we're just creating a little shadow. I think that looks like a little shadow. What do you think? Yeah. Now, I'm not going to do anything with my background up here, but you certainly can. You can use markers. You can color it in with this. You can add stars. You can add, you can do whatever you want. This is your creation to do any way you want. I left my hearts white because I just like that contrast. Now what I'm going to do is I've got my paintbrush here. You can use any type of paintbrush. Uh, you might want a fresh bowl of water just so that you can keep it clean. And we're going to be spreading this oil around. When I'm doing this sort of project, I like to start with the lightest color first. Um, and I'm, I think I'm going to start with the yellow. So I'm just dipping once and I'm going to spread this around. It does look kind of dark, but it'll, it'll dry. Now this does take, you know, at least a day to dry, but it spreads all that yellow around. Okay. I'm going to clean my brush. And then I want to dry my brush off because you really don't want to have water when you put it in the oil. Now I'm going to come in, I'm going to do all my blue. It really spreads it. Now you could also, by the way, just use your finger and smear it that way and not use the oil. It's whatever you have patience for. I don't have a lot of patience. <laughs> so I use the oil because it just really does a nice job. I'm going to get these little blue ones here, right here. I like to do all the colors at the same time. You know what? Since I have blue on my brush, I might as well just come down and do the blue that's down here. Spread this around. You don't need a lot of oil, okay? Don't keep wetting your brush. Just one dip goes a long, long way. You don't want too much oil because it will ruin your, your paper or your canvas. See how that spreads real nice? Okay. I feel good about that. Now I'm going to clean my brush super good. I'm going to show you if you didn't want to use the oil. You can come, see that's a dirty finger. Let's see, I have to find a clean finger. Use a clean finger to spread it. See? And it smears it. So like I said, if you don't have oil, don't worry. You can smear it with your finger. Just make sure that you use clean fingers. So the last thing, cleaning my brush really good. It's very dirty with that blue, so make sure you got it clean. Okay. Come in, I'm gonna do my pink. Spread this around. Sometimes I think with the brush it is a little easier between these little tiny areas than to use your finger, but Hey, you gotta do what you gotta do. Spread that out. And it looks dark, but I promise you that it will dry and it lightens up as it dries. So I'm just gonna finish this up. Be careful. Look, I got dirty fingers and I'm dirtying up my canvas. So make sure you touch it with clean fingers. And then use my finger to show you the difference here. Just using my finger to smear it. And there's my cake. Isn't that cute? I think it's so much fun to paint things that is around your house. 
you know, the cakes or um, he, th this, you know, Wayne was known for painting just everyday objects, a lot like um, An Andy Warhol. He just took a soup can and would paint a soup can, Andy Warhol would. And Wayne would take, you know, a, a lipstick, you know, probably that his wife wore and painted it. Anything colorful and vibrant, he was inspired to paint. So I challenge you to look around your house and something that looks cool and colorful, maybe it's a Lego that you built. Maybe it is a soup can. Maybe it's your favorite um, pair of shoes. Who knows? Go ahead and draw it. I challenge you to do that. Find something every day in your house and draw it and have fun. And definitely remember to show me. Send me a picture of it. Now, what we're going to do is I'm going to let that all dry and I'm pretty much done. Like I said, you could add things back here. You could add stars. You could add butterflies. You could make it look like it has wallpaper back there. Whatever you want. I know it's going to be amazing. Make sure that you send me the picture of this project as well. You can find me on Instagram, uh, Gorilla Art, and tag me. You can hashtag Gorilla Art Studio or hashtag Gorilla Art Cake and I will find it that way. Remember to give this video a thumbs up and definitely if you haven't already subscribe to my channel because you want to see all the fun things I post weekly and I look forward to creating with you on the next Creating with Gorilla Art.